When World War I ended in November 1918, Americans had reason to celebrate. Millions of U.S. soldiers were reunited with their families, and the economy was booming. The American triumph in Europe raised hopes for world peace and healing. The 200,000 African Americans who had served in the military overseas, along with 500,000 African Americans who had migrated north from southern farms for wartime employment, were hopeful that their patriotic contributions would pave the way for improved race relations and an expansion of civil rights. Representative of this hope for improved race relations was a group of African American soldiers from New York who made up the 369th Infantry Regiment. These soldiers spent more time on the front lines of the war than any other U.S. military unit, black or white. And on February 17, 1919, 1,200 of these proud soldiers, known as the Harlem Hellfighters, famously marched up Fifth Avenue and into Harlem before a quarter of a million spectators. Indeed, many African American soldiers returned from the war with a newfound determination to bring freedom to their own shores. But this determination was soon met with deadly resistance, and the tragedy known as the Red Summer of 1919 quickly unfolded. The Red Summer began on February 8, 1919 in Blakely, Georgia. It wasn't until November of that year when the violence subsided. The majority of these tragic events took place during the summer months. And because of the extreme violence and bloodshed during that time frame, it became known as the Red Summer of 1919. The Red Summer included at least 37 race riots in 15 states, more than 300 deaths, more than 10,000 injuries, at least 52 lynchings of African Americans, and dozens of burnings, torture, and assault of blacks. According to Wall Street Journal reporter and author Cameron McWhorter, the race riots and murders of African Americans arose because of post-war social tensions related to the demobilization of World War I veterans. Civil rights activist and Harlem Renaissance writer James Weldon Johnson noted, the Red Summer of 1919 broke in fury. The colored people throughout the country were disheartened and dismayed. The great majority had trustingly felt that because they had cheerfully done their bit in the war, conditions for them would be better. The reverse seemed to be true. A veteran had written, he'd gone back to Arkansas and had been treated so badly in his uniform that he'd moved to St. Louis and he said, I, I felt safer in the trenches than I did in Arkansas. The lynchings, burnings, and torture of African Americans turned into entertainment for many white people, including children, and up to 10,000 spectators would attend organized lynchings. In Mississippi, a man had been accused of rape. He had run for his life. They had posses chasing after him, and they finally found him and shot him. And then they brought him back. They got a doctor to keep him alive just so that they could lynch him the next day. Nobody did anything. And then there was this horrific, almost a festival where thousands of people were there. Some say up to 10,000 uh, politicians came and gave, gave speeches. And it was, it, was, it was like a county fair, except at the end of it, they... They shot a man to pieces, and his, parts of his body were sold. Postcards of his dead body were sold. I mean, it was a really horrific uh, event. I mean, you can read the headlines uh, in various newspapers in New Orleans and elsewhere that said, you know, there will be a lynching. There will be a lynching today at five, instead of, you know, there was a lynching last night. The tragic violence and bloodshed, which defined the Red Summer, seemed ceaseless, according to W. E. B. Du Bois one of the leading civil rights activists of the 1920s. In response, African American leaders began to mobilize their community. They would be the forebears of what would become the 1960s civil rights movement. This was the beginning of the long civil rights movement. The African American reaction to this violence really sparked a new political awareness on, on the part of African Americans. This civil rights movement was both legal and cultural. It took place in both the courtrooms and the ballrooms. On the legal front, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People waged legislative and judicial battles to protect African Americans from lynchings and other forms of racial violence. And at the same time that NAACP leaders like James Weldon Johnson and W.E.B. Du Bois were responding to the Red Summer with legal battles, they were also encouraging an urban explosion of artistic creativity centered in Harlem. This Harlem Renaissance attracted hundreds of black artists, authors, and 
playwrights, and musicians from across the country. James Holden Johnson, he's a big factor there. And he basically was the sort of grandfather of, of the Harlem Renaissance, but he had been an integral part of the NAACP during that whole period, uh, during 1919 and, and just before. The two are totally connected. While the Harlem Renaissance was part of a larger civil rights movement, Harlem became the cultural capital of black America. It happened on purpose. There was several individuals that consciously were looking to exalt, promote, and develop the consciousness in American society of black achievement and creativity. The most recognizable triumph of the Harlem Renaissance was the expansion of jazz. There were hundreds of new jazz musicians that emerged during the 1920s, coming to Harlem to contribute to the cultural movement. Harlem has always attracted music, people to come here. You know, like everybody comes to New York to enhance their music existence. The migration of jazz musicians to Harlem is commemorated in such classic songs as Duke Ellington's Take the A-Train, which describes the journey on New York's famous A-Train up to Harlem. Musician David Dura, who performed with artists Duke Ellington and Cab Calloway, described how jazz clubs contributed to the development and expansion of the music of the Harlem Renaissance. They had the Apollo Theater, you know, that was the big thing up here. The Apollo was the big thing. Most of us went through the Apollo with somebody. And jazz musicians, such as Louis Armstrong, Duke Ellington, Willie the Lion Smith, and Count Basie, laid the foundations of jazz for future generations and gained international recognition as performers. In the 1920s and 30s, Harlem provided venues for artists such as Duke Ellington at the Cotton Club and Cab Calloway at the Savoy Ballroom to hone their craft and elevate the African-American experience through music. Many of the themes highlighted by Ellington, Calloway, and other jazz musicians of the Harlem Renaissance reflected on post-war exuberance. However, some black artists, such as Billie Holiday, also became activists, shining a light on the black struggles of the era, including the lynchings of the Red Summer. Southern trees bear strange fruit, blood on the leaves and blood at the Black bodies swinging in the southern breeze. Strange fruit hanging from the poplar trees. And this reflection of the tragedy of the Red Summer can be seen in the works of other Harlem Renaissance artists, such as William Grant Still. Still's symphony, and they lynched him on a tree, was famously performed by the New York Philharmonic. After a series of tragic events, such as deadly racial riots and public murders that occurred across the United States in 1919, many African Americans in Harlem used art and music to unite and recover as a community. This triumphant artistic and cultural movement helped lay the foundations for the civil rights movement to come. But at its core, the artists of the Harlem Renaissance sought to advance black culture from the status of folk art and weave it into the broader American cultural landscape. And artists continue to honor these Harlem Renaissance pioneers. Whether it's Stevie Wonder paying homage to Ellington with his song Sir Duke, or Kanye West, sampling a cover of Holiday Strange Fruit with his song, Blood on the Leaves. Blood on the leaves. Blood on the leaves. I just need to clear my mind now. It's been racing since the summertime. The legacy of the tragedy of the Red Summer and the triumph of the Harlem Renaissance remain relevant today. <laughs>